Right. It's yeah. the same payment, but instead of paying for electricity, we're buying new things with it. Yeah. Right. Just yeah. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. Just yeah. Which works. It modernizes things. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're definitely using less less electricity and less fuel. The price of the electricity and the fuel is going to vary over the years. So sometimes that's going to go up, sometimes it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, even though we're using less of everything, it might actually cost more. They're not guaranteeing against that. They're only they're guaranteeing against our usage of the units. Mm -hmm. So do they come up with a projection? A projected savings? They did when, when they sold us on the whole concept, you know, over the course of the years, what, what the savings would be, and and, and, a, and and that's where we decided it yeah. was a good thing to do, sure. it was a good investment to make. Sure. Um, now the uh, third thing we might want to put on that table is how much we're paying them, how much uh, we saved in that, or how much we made in that particular year, and how much they originally projected. Okay. You know, you know me. I'm very good. Do I got to be? Oh, right. look. But, but this is more than. Doesn't really have. The, the question is, do we want to keep this going, where we're going to have this guarantee that we're going to get? Oh, no. If we don't see savings, that we're going to get money back. Do we want to keep that going by continuing to, to do this this check every year, or do we want to say, you know, we don't need that to know? What do you think we should do? I think we should probably do it this year, and um, and just to know for sure, you know, mm -hmm. that we've had consistency over a couple of years, and then next year maybe not. Because I mean, we see it. We see it in our in, when you look at the, the usage. And actually, um, last year when we were looking at the usage at the senior center, we saw it go up. But but then we asked them what was going on, and it turned out that someone had been when when the heat was on, somebody was turning on the air conditioning by accident. So we had both running. No, and, I think they were offsetting each other. Yeah. Automatically. And so it like just asking the question made them go, oh, and it, that was that fixed that problem. But anyway, <laughs> um, those things happen, and we can we can watch it. So. Anyway, so I think we should do. I think we should. I think we should do it for this year, and um, just be just be aware of it that that it's a thing. And then <laughs> decide that we're not going to do it next year. Decide that we are going to do well, it. Well, we'll see. We'll see what the report says, and uh, you know, make sure we all understand and what what the what happens if we don't do it the next year and. Then, take it from there. Okay. 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 Alright. Yeah. Okay. Did I agree, John? I, I am. Yeah. Well, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what what I just agreed to, but I'm pretty sure it's a pretty good idea. <laughs> uh, all right. Item B: the partial release of HUD lien agreement. Uh, we have a letter here. Of, should, should I read it or should I should give us a hand? Yeah, read it. It's short. Uh, basically, we have um, someone in town that's selling a lot of land. When they did a title search on the property, um, it shows that the release of the property was not properly recorded back in 1987. And um, Basically, back in 1987, the, um, the selectmen gave them permission to sell some building lots that were attached to a home, and the home had a HUD lien on it, and um, they released, they, they made it clear that the HUD lien wasn't attached to the other parcels, but it didn't translate in, and didn't make it onto the actual deeds. So now that they're going to sell the lot, is showing that there's a lien against it, but the lien is really against the house. Yeah, against the house. Is the lien on the house as well? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's on both. No, well, it was on all. It was the house with like it was a house with a big piece of property, and right. they locked them off. Right, so they locked so, them off to seven lots. Yes. So the lien was taken off all of the lots except for that one. It was actually taken off of all of the lots, but that last one that's being sold now was not reported properly, and it's not. Reflected in the town clerk's records. 
So they're trying to close on the property. So, so we yeah. found the, the letters that the selectmen wrote back in 97, the meeting minutes and all that. It just wasn't done right. So. Yeah. It's going to be on the lot. It's going to be on the house. Correct. It, right. It is. It's and just it's not on the lot. Right. Yeah. And yeah. this is lot number two, is not the lot of the house. Right. 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 It's just a plain lot. Yeah. 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 So we're just basically fixing a paperwork. Uh, mm -hmm. Why does it have to come to us to fix the mistake? If it was a mistake that we made, why does it have to come to us? Why isn't it just fixed? Because the selectmen are the ones who issued the HUD lien in the first place. But but we, we guys always do. But we made the mistake. We the town made the mistake and didn't take the lien off of that last property. So why does it have to come to us again? Why don't we just fix the mistake that we made? Well that's what you're doing, you gotta sign it. But that has to be on the agenda. Well, all three of us have to sign this partial release of agreement. This one even makes sense to me. It does? Yeah. This one makes sense to you? Yes. <laughs> it does? Because it doesn't make sense to me. If we already signed this, if, if, formers, if former selectmen already signed it, and well, we they, already... they signed it on all seven together. Yeah. And then when they, they recorded all, all of the lots, yes. that last one wasn't done. So it was probably the town, town clerk error. The town probably. clerk error, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So because it, Not necessarily. Oh. The property owner forgot that particular. Oh, okay. Because I asked that too. Oh, okay. So, so do we need a motion? So, be, so they don't really know. We don't really need a motion. We just need to sign it. You could make a motion, though, just to say... Well, I'm going to make a motion, then, that we... Just so it's clear, so that... 30 years from now when there's another issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that I make a motion that we the three selectmen sign the partial release of agreement. Um, I'm not too. Just I'm not too. Yeah, I'm not too. That's it. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Here it is. Aye. 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 It always comes down to one little piece of paper. It does. <laughs> um, all right, tax refunds. We got a lot. I mean, have a lot because Is this because of motor vehicle. Yeah, motor vehicle. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what we're hearing. Um, if everybody hasn't heard motor vehicle, the real screw up. They have put people are. Um, getting tax bills from other towns for vehicles that they have in Wellington from and they're going like if someone lived in Bristol, Connecticut ten years ago, they're getting a tax a bill for their car in Wellington. Um, the car they had ten years ago. Yeah, I'm sorry, the car that they yeah. And sometimes it's not even cars that they ever owned when they lived in those places. But Jeez. so so people in Wellington are getting tax bills from other towns, other people who live in other <coughs> towns are getting tax bills from Wellington. Great. And um so it's all coming out in the wash now. And yeah, we're going to fix it. We're going to fix the ones we can right now. Um, so I'll make a motion that we do a refund to Ellen O'Neill in Somerville, Mass. Um, for $30.89. And this is for a certificate of correction. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. And then this, I'll make a motion that we refund um, taxes to Teresa Gotros um, for a certificate of correction in the amount of forty-two dollars and four cents. Um, Are these new ones, by the way? Yeah, she's yeah. got a couple oh, new ones in yeah, there. That's why we don't have them. Yeah, that one should be in there. That one should have been. Yeah, this was one of the original. I'll second it. Yeah. It's in there. Next one, CAB East. Oh, all in favor? No. Okay, CAB East LLC uh, for a certificate of correction. Um, to, and this one's going for the Ford Credit Personal Property Tax in the amount of $123.03. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? No. Uh, make a motion we refund to Donna Porter of Potter School Road, Wellington, a certificate of correction in the amount of fifty-five dollars and thirteen cents. Second. Discussion. All in favor. Um, that we refund taxes for Jennifer Desimone of uh, 
Holland for overpayment in the amount of nine dollars and fifteen cents. Discussion? All in favor? Um, this is uh, to refund to Thomas or Elizabeth Treber a certificate of corrections uh, in the amount of twenty-two dollars and sixty cents. Second. Discussion? Aye. In favor? Aye. All right, and this is uh, CAB East LLC again. Um, this is a board credit personal property tax certificate of correction for $198.13. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion with that we refund to Melody Nevers of Mason Road a certificate of correction in the amount of $151.41. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, that I make a motion that we refund taxes to Allison Bailey of Enfield, Connecticut, for overpayment, amount of twenty-one dollars and sixty-three cents. I'll second. I'll notice we bill. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I make a motion we refund U.S. Bank National Association, um, and that's. Uh, goes to Minnesota, actually. A certificate of correction in the amount of $1,188.52. second. That particular one, just to let you guys know, is when you guys, way back when, did the ordinance to not tax leased property for the town. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was messed, it was missed in the assessor's office. Oh. So we taxed them. Uh, now, equipment there. Oh, okay. So okay. They're, they're firming it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I make a motion that we refund to Roseanne Fitzgerald a certificate of correction of twenty-eight dollars and sixty-one cents. Discussion. All in favor? Yeah, she does because that was the person. That was one, and here's number two. I uh, make a motion we refund to Roseanne Fitzgerald of Willington a certificate of correction for fifty-four dollars and eighty-two cents. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we're almost there. Yeah. We'll make a motion we refund to Stephen and Barbara King for overpayment of two hundred forty dollars and fifty-two cents. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, make a motion that we refund to Connecticut Service Inc. of Wellington uh, for overpayment of eighty-two dollars and eleven cents. Second. Discussion. All in favor. Aye. All right. We're all getting the money back. You get to sign all those. Yeah. I'll do that later. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, then we have to hear we have more money left. Than yeah. yeah. Uh, the next item is D. Solarize Willington. I'll just quickly tell you guys. I know I got the letter at home today. I got the letter at home today too. Yeah, and that was sent um, by the, um, the the company that that was chosen to do the installations. They they're bearing the, all the cost of doing all the marketing for Earthly. this program. Yeah. Earthly. And. Um, it, important dates for Wellington residents are September 15th in the Eastford Town Hall or October 5th in the Wellington Library. The vendor will be there to talk about solar installation and um, what the benefits are. And in the meantime, anyone who's interested can go onto their website and, and ask for a free evaluation. They'll come out to your house, take a look, see, see if you're a good candidate for it. And if so, um, just get you started on that process, and um, um, it's it's a good it's a good deal. So and it's a great company. Mm -hmm. It's a great company because we have solar panels on our house, and we had Earthlight do it, and they were phenomenal. They did a great job. Mm -hmm. Very professional. Any issues we have, they come to our house. Mm -hmm. And and uh, one of the questions I had from someone was, well, if, what if I don't want to use them and I want to use someone else? There's nothing precluding anyone from getting solar panels from from any other vendor that's out there. But, um, but they're the ones that were chosen by the committee of people who were representing Wellington and Eastford who were doing this jointly. There are something like 15 different town groups like that that were um, looking to do a solar rights program in their town. And 
there were at least 12 different vendors who bid on this and, and went through a whole process with interviews and stuff. So all the towns were interviewing all the companies, and um, it took a couple of days of, you know, thinking about it. And then each of the towns got to choose which one they thought would be a best fit for their community, and, um, and they matched them up that way. So um, this particular company happens to be located in Ellington, which is is a good thing for our residents. They're not from Fairfield County or something yeah. like that. They're local, um, and they have they did a successful campaign in Tolland and I think Coventry. And they're a family-owned business too. Yeah, yeah. So um, and their prices were really good, and the the, pro the things that the, the components that they're using are, are considered cool. really really good. So yeah. Did you have a question? Yeah, call them. Yeah. Within 15 minutes of getting the yellow page in, yep. No, yep. they didn't call. Uh, went online. Mm -hmm. Within a half an hour, they were on the phone to me. Really? Yep. Yep. That was today. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. So by like one o'clock, I'd already got off the phone with them. Mm -hmm. um, very nice people over the phone. Mm -hmm. Actual factual. Gave me all the good points, bad points, some rough estimates or not so rough estimates and everything else. But very professional. Mm -hmm. They, they were, were just like company. quick. Yeah, Good. and a great company to work with. Right? Yeah, yeah. No yeah. complaints at all. Yeah. Sound pretty good, but I just don't have the space to put up the size of array that I'm going to need. Mm. So I have to clear trees out to do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but they were very nice, you know, when we got all done talking. Yeah. I said, well, you can just take me off the list. Oh, yeah, you're off. So, okay. Cool, cool. Well, good. All right. Uh, anything else about that? You guys want to see anything? No? All right. Well, moving on to E, which I didn't write down what I what we called it. is the appointment of a hearing officer. Oh, yes. Test the tone. Okay. So what this is about is if your car gets towed in the town of Wellington and you don't think it was done that it shouldn't have been, um, then you can contest it. Well, and, and by the way, we didn't, the town of London did not tow the car or, or ask to have it towed. It was the state police who did. And so so this resident is saying that it shouldn't have been towed. And it's taken us weeks to figure out how to go about that because it wasn't something that we did. We can't even, have, and so um, when, when you talk to the state police, they say that they don't do it either. And then what we've come to know after Robin did a lot of research talking to other towns and then we ended up on the phone with the attorney is that the Board of Selectmen needs to appoint a hearing officer. The hearing officer needs to be somewhat versed in legal proceedings because it's a whole thing where you can call in witnesses and it's like a like a almost like a court thing and every different people have to be notified. It's it's a whole thing. So um, it can't be me. Well, what what I'm going to recommend we do is that we nominate our town attorney, who oh. who could do it. Um, and um, basically, he would, he would set up this hearing. It would happen, and, and then it's going to cost us money. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. It's already cost us a ton. I, I spent like three days on it. I'm not a total of three days, but all the day now. Yeah, because uh, because the other towns that have resident state troopers, oh. they have their own way of dealing with it. Then, and towns without them, there nobody has experience with this. Well, actually, and, nobody does this. Yeah. Nobody's ever had that happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This resident found this form on on some website. Yeah, that I love it. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway. So we can basically. Hire our town attorney to do this, mm -hmm. and there's no uh, no conflict there. No, and and actually, the the town of Willington isn't a party to any of it. We, right. didn't, we didn't ask for it to happen. We're not the ones that would be reimbursing him or or doing anything. So the state police would be reimbursing him. Presumably, yeah. But so we can we can stick to the state police if we want to. Yeah. yeah. But 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 as a hearing officer, he would need to call on different witnesses too, 
um, like the, yeah. the, the the trooper who did that. I'm, I'm not sure. What, well, I'm not just and, just thinking. This is prob probably something should be handled by the courts um, mm -hmm. because okay, we we're hiring a lawyer to to represent us on the hearing or to hold the hearing, but still, you know, any interest we have in this, well, we're hiring the guy who's holding the hearing. Uh, It'd be cheaper to just pay for the tub than hire a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It would be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lawyers, 200 to 50 That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's the part that... You know, makes no it's sense. It's a nuisance, just... Oh, no. It makes no sense, but ex well, except for well, that. Well, we don't except for that. that. The next person who gets towed is going to come here. We have to give this guy his hearing. Well, we don't. We also don't know the. Uh, oh, really? We also we do don't know the. We don't have anybody. Particulars of the case, you know why? Oh, this is a one shot deal. Well, he's he has just told he's told us why what he, his side of the thing just you know, the conversation is filling up. Yeah. Who told him? Walt West. Yep. Yes. I paid the fee. I mean, how far did Walt have to? It was eighty dollars. Oh, that's, that's, a that's a no cheap. brainer. Pay him eighty bucks and give him a car wash. Let's just Go let's away. just appoint yeah. we'll just appoint somebody here for free and we'll say, okay, thank you. We'll take care of that. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I like that idea. But, but except if you hear the details of it and you don't think that I mean, if his car, if his car should have been towed, it should have been towed. But that's the thing. What about the next guy who gets his home? Yeah. You realize that, but this eighty dollar ticket, this eighty dollar ticket's going to have cost us five, six hundred dollars. That's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. More. Christine, does the state police have an obligation to notify you when they issue a ticket in no. a vehicle to no. out of Wellington? No. I mean, can you address that so you can hit these things off? No, I'm. They weren't towing it on behalf of the town. Yeah, they weren't towing it. If our public works director saw it and said, "Oh." This this needs to go. I mean, this needs to. Then then we would be respond. We would be the. We would probably just have as an agenda item and hear the guy out and be like fine. But that's not the process. So I don't um, think we should use the lawyer. You don't. No, because I think it's just going to cost the town money that we don't have to spend. I mean, mm -hmm. great, this could be the only time it ever happens, and it's not like, often. Yeah. But what is it? If it's not, I just, I don't know. Right. We're, we're stuck in the middle and we're going to pay. And it just, if it's just a matter of, of, I don't know, if it's a matter of knowing, you have to have a basic knowledge of the law. You don't have to, you know, to be well versed in the law, correct? Cor correct. I mean, there's just a, there's a procedure that has to be involved in. I, I wouldn't be comfortable doing that. No. no. In our hearings, there's an offer and compromise. You can have the guy come in and you can make a deal with him. So probably there's a procedure where you can just say, hey, we'll pay the ticket. See you. But there's unset precedent. We're going to pay. How many toes do we do a year? I have no idea. It's like, the first time. That's why but I, I know. have to tell you when to do this. Again, we don't, again, we don't know the story. You know, we have people who uh, we really don't want to get involved in something like this because they may be having their car put every day. Yeah. yeah. That, we don't want to get involved with something right. like that. They keep putting their car in the same spot and say, well, I'll just get my money. It doesn't matter if it gets towed. Right. So, That's right. So, right. You know. uh, or you have people who might have a legitimate gripe, in which case, you know, being happiness wants to be gone. Uh, trouble is, we don't we don't know this, or I don't know what's, who it is, what the right. uh, particulars of the case are. Right. Mm -hmm. well, and that's the thing, is too, is we have a lot of conflicts of interest. Because if you knew who it was, you'd have a conflict. It's a conflict of interest. I mean, no matter who you think, you have to have to hire the lawyer to protect yourself, but maybe negotiate a flat rate, no more than this. It's a phone call. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it's a small, it's a small claim, you know, court case. You know, I don't understand why the town even has to get involved with something like that. Because the state statute says the town will appoint a hearing officer. That's that's and no other town has gone through this, probably? Uh, that Mansfield, has state police? Mansfield has done away with it years ago, was like the last one they did. Stafford, has, Stafford and Mansfield both have hearing officers, but they deal with different issues. One does like parking violations, the other one does building code. Yeah. Um, Commentry laughed at me. Talon? And Talon, did I talk to Talon? I don't remember if I talked to Talon. 
Mm -hmm. They don't have a hearing officer. Yeah, they don't. Uh -huh. yeah. They do a per diem with one of the other towns to just use their public hearing officer. Well, that that's the thing. Nobody has a hearing yeah. officer that that will do this particular thing because yes. I spent twelve hours. <laughs> <laughs> I think that we should have made some. So you think? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but I would think that you know it's a one-time thing. Well, anybody in the town of Wellington might know that person. Exactly. But how does that make it a conflict? It doesn't, whether you know the person, yeah. good, bad, or different, you're, you're listening to what's going on and you're making an impartial decision on whether you think the, the law is violated or mm -hmm. not violated. It shouldn't happen. It shouldn't would, be. The, would our town attorney have a, reasonably have a conflict with this person? No. And then why don't we go with what the, the original, the original suggestion, have the town attorney do it, that way we have somebody who's, and it'll cost us a little money, but we'll get it out of the way. And it's just another one of those un, unfunded <coughs> mandates that I love to talk about. Yeah, oh, it is. Yeah. It's, it's tricky. Yeah. 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 Um, so, oh, well, so we have a letter here that would basically we, we, have to, we would I would have to send to the commissioner of the of the motor vehicle DMV saying who say, you know as required by general statutes and regulations um, blah 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 I hereby provide you would notice an appointment of bond individuals a hearing officer and that way he would then he would be instated to be the hearing officer and able to do it and hear the evidence. So basically, I guess I, I'm looking for a motion to to just do it that way. But do you need to be done with a point Glenn Dole as an hearing officer? Yes, that's, that's what I mean. It, it would be a, a motion to authorize me to sign a letter appointing him. Okay. I will so move. One second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. I mean, we can't just hand off. That's the thing. Just one thing. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't no, agree with this. As much as we'd like to, it's a whole can of worms yeah. if we do. I agree. Uh, it's... No, I get it. It's okay. I just don't agree with it. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just I agree. Yeah. It's not really All right, then item F is our superintendent resignation. Or, so we don't have an actual letter. Um, from what I understand, the Board of Education got a letter of resignation, and um, and I believe that the teachers and the, super, the principals have been told, and uh, the school staff has been told. I don't believe a letter has gone out to the teachers yet, so it's not prob probably not our story to tell yet. But um, I, I think it's, it's official, so um, I just wanted to to mention that it's happened. <laughs> um, I think there's going to be a lot of discussion about what to do next, and um, I was just thinking I'd like to send a letter to the Board of Ed, if you guys agree, to ask that they um, include the Board of Selectmen in their discussion, or at least ask us what we think. And the reason why I'm, ask, I'm saying that is that a lot of the, there's a lot of stuff, the sh shared services that we the, the town side works on with the school side and it's really important that we keep that up i think it helps us save a lot of money and it just creates a good working environment but we do we share our financial office so there's probably five people five staff people who work for both the town and the school mm -hmm. um our all of our it is completely um shared mm -hmm. we um we plow the snow at the school. They let us use the gym. Our superintendent's office is here in this building. They pay for the phones. We pay for everything else. Um, and, and all of that is done loosely. And there's, there's a, a lot of examples of things. The buses are parked at the bus lot that we maintain and we take care of. Um, so I just, I, so for that reason, I end up working with the superintendent very closely and our budgets are kind of intertwined in, in that way, which I think is a, is a good thing as long as it, it works, and it, it did work, and I want it to still work, 
So I just think we need to be involved in that conversation a little bit and, and make sure that everyone understands how much of that there is. So. Well, I think it's really sad because I think Dave is an asset to the town of Wellington and I think that only was maybe super important. But mm -hmm. I agree with you about the letter. I'm not sure. So it's good. Okay. Anything else you would add in there? I have my differences with Mr. Harding, but I have the utmost respect for him. I'm sorry to see him leave. Uh, he was a very good, uh, very, very, very good superintendent. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be different, that's for sure. No matter what, it's going to be different. So. When is his uh, last trip? Um, I think that's still. Uh, up for discussion, is that right? I, I think it's. I think it was October seventh, but then there's a chance he might stay until December. But we should give him ninety day notice. We should request him to go there. Yeah. So I think you know there needs to be a short term plan and a long term plan. And um, yeah. But uh, but the other thing is. The next Board of Ed meeting, which I would go to, is the same night as our town meeting. It's next Tuesday. Well, town meeting will take five minutes? No, we no, have four, four agenda day. items on there. And one of them is a vote. <laughs> so, well, maybe know. we could ask one someone to put that. be long. Yeah, that could be long. Maybe we, could, maybe we could ask someone to put that on the, um, <coughs> at the end of the agenda. The discussion at the end of the agenda is when we can make it after. Mm. Yeah, I can look at or have a special meeting about it. I'm, sorry, I'm sure there's going to be multiple meetings. Ask them to put the discussion with the superintendent at the end of their meeting so we might have time to get there. At the end of what meeting? Of their board of meeting. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Or have a special meeting. This can't be decided in one meeting anyway, mm -hmm. but. Um, um. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I'll do that. Uh, old business, we're on to item A, Crumbling Foundation Update. And this is the discussion of building permit process. So we had a little bit of this discussion already. Um, and like Tim said, what's, each town is starting to think about this and do things differently. South Windsor just decided to go all in, no fees when you're replacing Stafford went the complete opposite direction of that um, and said, you know, no, we yeah. Yeah. Charge the fees. yeah, and our current practice is to do what I described earlier, which is to only, you know, to really parse out the cost that's associated with replacing those walls and leave it at that, which brings the cost way down to the, to the homeowner. And I know um, that is that that is one big concern is making sure that the savings is not to the contractor, but it is for the, the you know, it's one thing, if we're going to give out some kind of savings to, and to do something like 